Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sean, short for Sean, but today I'm going to be Sean the Chef. And for my Easter film, rather than just talk about um, Easter eggs and things like that, I'm actually going to do a bit of baking for you. I am going to bake one of Wales staple foods, Barra Breath. I've, over the years, introduced so many people from outside of Wales to Barra Breath. People have never heard of it, never tried it, and everybody who's tried it since, um, I've come back for more. So today, I'm going to bake Barra Breath for you. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do to make this uh, bar breath eh, is uh, make some good strong tea. So I just boiled the kettle up. I'm using Yorkshire tea bags. The only tea bags that's worth having to make any sort of tea at all. And in good blue peter fashion, I've actually put in 16 ounces of the fruit in this bowl here. Now I've used sultanas, you can use any sort of soft fruit or dried fruit. Some people even put candied peel in which is the food of the devil and I can never use it myself. So we're going to make 16 ounces of hot Yorkshire tea. And I've got a big spoon here so I stir it around and make sure it's nice and uh, strong. And then we'll uh, put it in with the sultanas and let them soak overnight to actually soak up all the uh, tea. I'll mix it a couple of times during the night as well. And then tomorrow we can use this uh, fruit in the bar breath and this is what makes it nice and uh, moist as i said before some bar breath that you get is uh, quite dry they're almost like a boiled fruit cake in consistency where a bar breath really should be nice and moist okay that should be okay i say three tea bags so plenty of uh, strong tea in it goes we'll uh, squeeze out the tea bags Make sure we get all the good bits in there. Give it a quick stir and leave it go. So here are our ingredients today. Um, the raisins have plumped up overnight in the tea and they're ready to go. We've got a pound or 16 ounces of self-raising flour, two ounces of softened butter, which I've chopped up into little squares to make it easy to uh, work into the flour. I've got seven ounces of soft brown sugar, a teaspoonful of ground cinnamon and uh, mixed spice, second teaspoon of mixed spice, and two eggs at room temperature. And that's it. Let's make a banana breath. So the first thing we're going to do is actually uh, sieve the flour into the bowl. Try not, not, not to make too much of a mess here. We're also going to put the uh, spices in with it as well. Now a lot of uh, people don't realise that this is one of the secrets of um, Barra Breath is actually sieving the flour. Because a lot of people don't realise and a lot of chefs don't realise that once you sieve the flour it not only takes all the lumps out of the flour but it takes all the calories out of Barra Breath as well. It doesn't work for all cakes but definitely for Barra Breath. You sieve the flour calories disappear so you're allowed to have a second slice without being feeling guilty so that's that into there and the next thing then is to actually add the uh, butter spread the butter around i'll have to work this with my fingertips to break it down to look like fresh breadcrumbs just cover it up first before i get my hands in them to get mucky and in true, true blue Peter style, I've got to say, my hands have been washed. Look out for um, hygiene and things like that. So wash your hands before you put your hands in there. And now I just got to squeeze it all together until it resembles breadcrumbs. So it's going to take me a little while. So um, we'll come back to it once I've finished. Okay, that's uh, mixed in. So now I'm going to have to uh, sieve the brown sugar in as well. And then combine that together with the flour and the, and the butter. It takes a little bit to get this through a soft brown sugar, but just got to get the lumps out of here. Okay, so now just combine that together. So that way you'll uh, leave sieve this uh, brown sugar. It always lumps up again after. So sometimes I wonder why we bother, but. That's what we do. 
Okay, and then we've got the uh, pound of fruit and this juice here that uh, we're going to put in and combine together. Fold that in. Mix it all together. You don't want to use a uh, electric whisk or anything. I guess you want to don't want to break the sultanas up. They're nice and plump with the uh, tea. You want to keep them nice and plump. We don't we don't want to chomp them up at all. And as you can see, it's dried out a little bit here. So I'm going to add the uh, two eggs, which I've actually uh, used up a little bit beforehand to save time. Probably cooking with lots of washing up as well. So we mix all this together. And once this is uh, all combined, um, that's it really. We're just going to start cooking. So we'll have to uh, put the oven on and uh, put them in uh, cases ready to go in the oven, which we'll do shortly. So here we are now, it's all combined nicely. Nice, what I call cow pat consistency and I've got a couple of tins here I put a lining in I can't be asked to uh, grease with paper and uh, grease the tin uh, they're non-stick uh, loaf tins anyway so I put a, um, a liner in and I'm going to put about a pound in weight of mixture in each one uh, I measured on the on the scales because then I know when I put them both in together I can leave them in for the same time and uh, in fact, I might put about a pound and a half in each. Thinking about it, let's have a look. Yeah. And then when uh, when they cook, they'll cook at the same time. And just a little bit more. I'll settle it up. That's good. Not that one. And flatten it out before it goes in the oven. And if there's any left over, what I'm going to do is make them into little cakes. Uh, like fairy cakes, um, but they'll be bar brief uh, instead of uh, obviously the fairy cake mix. Um, they're very good for little uh, picnics and things like that. But obviously they won't go in the same time as these because they, they'll cook a lot, a lot faster. And there won't be much left over today anyway. But, um, there we are, there's two of those. Um, I've switched the oven off on already, it's a fan oven, so it's uh, 160. Uh, 180 for an ordinary oven or you need 350c for a, a, a new old fashioned way or gas mark mark 4 so i'll just flatten these out and then uh, we'll put them in the oven and they'll be in the oven for about an hour okay so the big ones are now gone in the oven and we're going to make some nice little ones now just put a little spoonful in each, each one how many we will have i'm not quite sure We'll see. We'll carry on going until we run out. A bit more in there. Little fingers are really good for this. Get it off the edge. I say these won't go in until the others come out. Uh, the big, uh, big ones will take about an hour. It usually take about half that time. Uh, there's all sorts of recipes of barra brief. I'm not saying this is the best one. This is my internationally renowned barra brief. Uh, this barra brief has been eaten in Vancouver, Germany, Scotland, England, and of course Wales. And over the years, doing our motorbike tours, um, I've been able to find lots of different places selling barra brief. Some of it is mediocre, some of it is quite poor. Um, some of it is obviously shop bought and they just slice it up and hand it out. But there are some places that um, really do a good job and uh, there's obviously made themselves. And some places um, uh, actually warm it up before you get it. And uh, a nice slab of uh, salted butter as well which makes a real difference when you're eating barra brief. 
But if you get good valor piece, you don't actually have to put any butter with it at all. It's a speckled bread, but you can eat it just as it is. But uh, you do get some that are quite dry, but the choice is yours. I'd always try it first before you put the butter on it anyway. So, he says licking his finger. That's my battle brief. And um, come back in an hour or so and uh, we'll have it out the oven and we'll see what it's like. So we've been about an hour now and uh, I'm just going to take the uh, battle brief out just to see if it's cooked. stab it to see whether or not it's um, cooked. I should use a skewer really but I haven't got a skewer. Yep, that's kind of clean. Let's get the other one out. And now we'll do the same thing now for the little ones. They should be cooked right now as well. So we'll take them out. <gasps> Look at that. Lovely. We'll take them out the tray and let them cool and uh, we'll put a kettle on. For a cup of tea. So here we are then, the moment of truth. Let's just cut into it and see what it's like. Nice crumbly top bit. Look at that. Now that's what you call barber brief. So there you are. And, uh, nice cup of Yorkshire tea with no milk as well. Perfect. So there we are then, that's my take on barber brief. So if you want any more instructional cooking videos, let me know. Oh, if you want anything relating to motorbike tours, motorbike sidecar tours, visit my website at www.midwheelstours.co.uk and I'll see you next time.